Hello everyone, this is Miguel Greenberg and today I'm going to talk about a Twilio project. Um, a while ago I wrote this blog post on the Twilio developer blog that shows how to build a video conferencing application. Um, for some reason uh, many people are uh, having issues setting up the project on their computers. So what I'm going to do in this video is to show you all the steps to uh, to install and run this video conferencing app on your computer. Uh, for uh, for the details on how this application works, how it can be uh, customized to fit your needs, uh, I recommend that you go check out the blog post. In the blog post, I have a lot of detail on uh, on on how how the application works, uh, both the Python side, which is written with the Flask framework and the browser side which is written in vanilla JavaScript. Uh, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and just show you the steps in this video. So I'm going to begin by uh, by cloning the project uh, which is on GitHub. So git clone https github.com slash Miguel Greenberg slash flask Twilio video. There we go. Then change into the project. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is show you how to set up your Twilio credentials. So if you look in the project, uh, there's there's a file called .env.template. So this is the file that shows what, uh, what values you need to provide in terms of authentication and credentials. So I'm going to copy this file into .env, which is the name, uh, the name that the real file should have, and then open the file in my editor. Uh, so here we, we have three values that we need to provide. So all of these can be obtained from your Twilio accounts. So I'm going to go into my uh, Twilio console and here in my front page I have the account SID which is the first of the three so I'm going to paste my account SID right there and then uh, the next two are the, the SID and the secret for an API key so if you have an API key uh, in, in your account already then go ahead and paste those values there uh, I assume most of you will not have an API key. So to get one, you need to go into the settings section and then find API keys. And here you can create API keys for, uh, for, for any projects. So I'm going to go ahead and make one. Uh, I'm going to give the name video and then key type should be standard. So create the key. And now I'm shown the, the SID and the secret values. Uh, it is important to note that the secret portion of the key is not going to be shown again. So you need to take it from the, from the page where you created the key. Uh, because if you lose it, then the key will not be able to work anymore. You will have to make a new key. Uh, and of course, I'm not worried about you seeing my key because by the time you see this video, this key will be long gone. I'm, no, I'm going to delete it after I end this video, uh, right? Because security matters. Um, so uh, that's the SID. And now let's copy the secret. And there we go. So now we have everything uh, configured in terms of credentials. So I'm going to accept this. And now my key is fully uh, configured. So I'm going to save and exit my editor. Um, for the next step, I'm going to set up a Python virtual environment and then install all the requirements, uh, all the dependencies that this project needs on it. So uh, Python 3-m vmv and then the name of the virtual environment, which I normally call vmv as well. Uh, for this, feel free to create the environment however you like. If you use uh, Poetry or Pipenv, you know, all those things are all 
fair so you can use the method that you like the best uh, I'm going to activate the environment and uh, note that if you are doing this on Windows your activation command is slightly different so uh, check out the blog post to see how this is done on Windows if you don't know um, so I have the, the environment activated now I'm going to install my requirements so pip install r requirements.txt and this is going to bring all the dependencies that we need for for this project to uh, to work so this is going to take a second and now we are ready so now i think we are ready to run the uh, the server so python app.py is the command that starts the server and now we have it running uh, there are some uh, restrictions in web browsers with regards to sharing or giving access to the camera and the microphone um, some browsers require this to be done on a non-local host uh, URL and uh, sometimes you also need to be on a on, on an encrypted website so HTTPS so uh, for many situations this URL in which the, the application is running is not going to work so what we are going to do is we are going to use this tool called ngrok to set up a public URL that will be uh, that will be tunneling requests into our application so this is going to be temporary uh, but during the time that we run ngrok we are going to have a URL uh, that is hosted by ngrok uh, on the ngrok domain and any requests that get into that URL will be forwarded into the application here so I'm going to open a new terminal window so I'm gonna leave this running and then split this terminal in two and then in the bottom half I'm going to run ngrok so I'm going to activate the environment once again and then ngrok HTTP 5000 and this is telling ngrok that we want a URL that will uh, forward requests uh, HTTP requests to port 5000 so this is going to take uh, a few moments and now uh, ngrok already started and here in the two forwarding lines ngrok shows what is the public URL that it assigned to our server running here locally on, on my machine so uh, I'm going to copy this the uh, the HTTPS one just to make sure that your browser uh, gives you access to the camera and then I can come to my browser and test this and hopefully the application will start so here we get a request for a camera access I'm going to allow it and here I can see myself I already have my uh, my own video uh, running so to connect to a video call you have to write your name here and then uh, join call so now it wants also access to the microphone and now we have one par participant online so, so now I'm not only uh, seeing my own video but I'm also connected to this uh, this video room in which other people can join uh, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go to my Chromebook I have my trusty Chromebook uh, right here and I'm going to connect as a second participant from from Chrome running on my uh, on my Chromebook so let's see um, so now this is the fun part because I'm gonna have to copy the uh, the ngrok URL so it's 1fb 3bd no, 3bf d7cc4a.ngrok.io okay so now I'm going to connect as Miguel Chromebook and join the call give access to camera and microphone and there we go so 
Now, uh, now we have uh, two participants in this call, and uh, the uh, the video is shared automatically. Uh, but there is also uh, a screen sharing option that I'm going to show you right now. So I'm I'm going to click the share screen button on my uh, my Chromebook, and then I'm going to share. What can I share here? It's going to be, oh, here's the terminal window. I'm going to share this terminal window. So there is, uh, there's a terminal window that I'm sharing from the Chromebook. Uh, so now, back on my main laptop, uh, I can click on any of these windows to, uh, to make it full screen. So that's one. Here is the screen sharing. And this works on your own video as well. So uh, this is the application. So hopefully now you have a, a pretty good idea of how to set it up and run it. Um, so uh, if you have any additional questions that you think I haven't addressed in this video, then feel free to comment below and then I'll, I'll try to help you uh, get it up and running. So thank you so much and uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.